Well, here I am, falling to my certain death, having failed to save everyone I cared about. Yep, things don't get much worse than this. But I'm getting ahead of myself and confusing you probably. Let's go back to when all this started. I'm Shenanigoon and I had just booted up Dishonored for the first time. I know it's a very stealth oriented game, but wasn't sure about what the best challenge for it would be. And then I realized it was staring me in the face. The boldest measures are the safest. So for this challenge, I will not ever use stealth. A few clarifications. Crouching doesn't automatically mean stealth if I'm using it to go through small spaces. I'm not hiding from anyone after all except my own guilt maybe. And if I kill someone that didn't see me coming, that doesn't mean stealth if I give them a fair chance to see me coming. So basically, if I'm sneaking to or past anyone in any way, that is stealth and therefore a failed challenge. This will be done on the hardest difficulty too since it's supposed to be a challenge after all. Oh, and just a warning, this will have massive spoilers for Dishonored in case that matters to you. Now let's go be bold and brash. I, Corvo Otano, have finally come home as royal bodyguard to the Empress. Before I can even get off the boat, I lose when I get in trouble for jumping on this guard's head. Apparently, that's a no-no. Right off, my bodyguard skills are put to the test when assassins show up. They look pretty scary though, and I try to hide behind the Empress and her daughter. But despite being here to kill her, they want me dead first. Very rude and strange priorities, if I say so myself. The Empress is sadly killed, even though I obviously did everything I could to save her. I'm accused of the crime when the assassins and little Emily, the daughter, vanish before the guards show. I of course say nothing to defend myself, anything to keep that mysterious cool nature about me. I'm bashed in the face with the title card and wake up in prison six months later. A key has been left so I may escape, but I'd much rather sit here in my bed. Seems like a lot less trouble, I gotta tell ya. The need to be productive finally wins out though, and against my better judgment, I leave my cell to get a sword. This thug tells me to cut some throats, and I don't want to let him down so I do exactly that. Turning from him, I get into my first fight which goes pretty well, only losing half my health. Nothing a health potion won't fix. I find myself a pistol, but have much more enjoyment in chucking a bottle at the guards. I blow my way out of prison and the game tells me to jump. I say heck no to that and take the stairs down. I'm not crazy. Though that definitely can be argued against as I mock the guards who have lost track of me. There are terrible shots, but a few more shots that I'd like do hit me. Upon reaching the exit, I'm politely asked if I'd like to stay in prison. What an odd question. Out of curiosity, I decide to stay, but after nearly dying in another fight, I decide to do the healthy decision and leave. And the sewers a pack of weapons have been left for me, but as long as I have my trusty bottle, I'm happy. Tragically, the bottle's destroyed in a trap moments later, breaking my heart. Making my way to the exit, I meet Samuel, my own personal boat chauffeur. I chuck a bottle in his face out of curiosity and am horrified when he doesn't flinch at all. Clearly, more demon than man. He takes me to a bar to meet the loyalists, the group who's helped me work out of prison, whether I want it to be or not, I might add. After trashing their bar for a bit, I head to sleep and wake up in the realm of the outsider. This emo boy gives me a really cool tattoo, and almost as cool powers, like the ability to teleport. He also gives me a heart. It's a weird gif, but it's the thought that counts, right? The heart does a pretty good job at mimicking what my heart does when I'm looking at something cute versus when I'm not. I wake back up, shove a bunch of statues who knows where, and upgrade my health as well. While talking to Havelock, the guy in charge around here realized my addiction to breaking bottles might actually be out of control when I listen to nothing he says and just focus on breaking the bottle next to him. It drives me mad when it turns out this particular bottle is immune to all my attacks. It is awkward when I click a button prompt without realizing the said prompt is to kill my ally. My bad. I buy a bunch of upgrades from the local whiz and head back into town to kill the head overseer. I haven't committed any wrongs yet, but the guards are aggressive anyways for some reason. Maybe seeing a masked man with a blade in one hand and a beating heart in the other might be a cause for worry. Nah. That can't be it, they're just weirdos. I meet a blind old crazy lady and of course help her kill the ruffians bothering her. I get into a fight with some goons and experience my very first actual death. It's quickly followed by many others. On my way to the High Overseer, I run into Martin, an overseer who's part of the Loyalist group. Unfortunately, he suffers the same fate as Havelock earlier when I confuse the button prompt as a way to free him. He is free in a way, just from his mortal coils all. The next time I try goes a bit better after I jump on his head for a little, I find the release right next to him. What a perfect hiding spot. I break into the Overseer HQ, and because I only have a sliver of health at this point, the floor and I get really well acquainted. Only by planting some traps around me and letting the guards rush into them do I manage to prevail. Blinking, the teleporting power, and not the important eye function, really proved essential in order to survive the fighting with the Overseers. Finally reaching the High Overseer, I surprise him with a bottle to the face, followed by a sleep dart before engaging his men in combat. This goes less than stellar, as I was seeking to spare the life of the man who actually kills me, because his daughter asked me to. I do manage to knock both of them out on my second try, but I learn a valuable lesson about spraying bullets everywhere as I kill him while defeating his men. Oopsie. 
I brand the High Overseer as a heretic, then make it back to Samuel's always jovial face. I tuck more glasses at my disturbing comrades before heading off to rescue Emily. Before I get there, I'm stopped and invited to meet their boss, Slackjaw. He wants my help, and he promises to sneak me into the club where Emily's held if I help him. Only problem is I don't sneak, so I have no intention of taking his offer. But my addiction to breaking bottles gets me in much more trouble here when I accidentally smash an explosive bottle right next to him. He's not so happy about that, and I'm forced to kill everyone there. Accidents happen, don't they, no? Sheesh. While attacking people on the main road, I get stuck in an endless loop of dying as my skills aren't quite up for fighting so many men at one time. I get lucky a couple times but get randomly shot before I can make it to a new checkpoint. I feel especially mocked when my dying views the sign that put me on this journey in the first place. I finally notice the marksman that keeps killing me and I rush in the building he's at before I can die. I then set up traps so that when other guards rush in after me, they meet their demise. I make my way to the hotel where Emily's kept, held by the traitorous brothers of Lord Pendleton, one of the loyalists. I discover my favorite tactic of shooting, then stabbing, as it works wonders, and mid-fight I'm surprised to find myself slaying one of the brothers. Total surprise, but total victory. Works for me. I find little Emily and she takes off on her own, expecting me to escort her. Naturally, I'm too busy looting, but she seems fine. I go back, pick up the Pendleton bro's corpse, and carry it to find the other brother. Unfortunately, I miss my first throw, but I slow down time and try it again. It disturbs me when it goes right through him, and I'm forced to kill him the old-fashioned way. I find a man strapped in an electric chair, and worrying about his hydration, I try to give him a glass. It doesn't quite work out as hoped. I grab Emily and head out the door, only to find her long gone after exiting the room. Guess she too must have portal powers because I have no clue how she made it to the boat already. When I make it to the boat, I want to bring some explosive whale oil along for the ride. Turns out the boat is super slippery as the oil just goes flying when I try and set it down, exploding and killing old Samuel. I have to come without oil this time sadly and we head home with the young empress. When hanging out in the bar again, I try to smash Havelock with a glass but it passes through. Of course, I refuse to accept this witchcraft and do what must be done. On the second go through, I take note of the glass that Havelock has a death grip on and try and shoot it out of his hand. Turns out that might as well be his heart when he dies to it and is somehow still holding onto the glass. Definitely has an alcohol problem. Now it's time to capture the mad genius that's been building all the bad guys' inventions. I do some Naruto running across some rails, chuck more whale oil around, and die horrendously to a device that electrocutes any nearby intruders. I make my way around, turn off the device, then open fire like crazy with my pistol. It really does work wonders. I find a safe that I don't know the combination to, but worry not, I have a plan. Turns out trying every single number doesn't work quite as quickly as I hoped, and I'm forced to abandon that plan. It was worth a shot. I break a thug free from imprisonment and he promises to show me some shinies. Sadly, we never make it as the whale oil I'm lugging around is blown up mid-conversation. Despite being the one carrying the explosive, I survive, but my friend is not so lucky. No plot armor for him. I die and try once more, but when I accidentally step on his head, he turns aggressive, knocking the oil out of my hand, leading to another explosive death for him. It almost makes me think lugging around highly explosive yet fragile whale oil might have some cons to it. I made it to the genius who I'm fairly sure is Rasputin, that crazy Russian fella. How he ended up here, I have no idea. I chuck some whale oil on his face, but oh yeah, I need him alive. My bad. I try again, knock him out with a dart into the face, and lug him back to Samuel. I stumble upon something going on between Martin and Havelock. I'm not really sure what it is, but whatever it is, I do feel wrong for intruding. I decide to go intrude elsewhere, the elsewhere being the Boyle sisters' estate. One of these sisters is financially backing the bad guys, and I need to take her down. Unfortunately, tall boys are blocking my way. These guys are very tough, and obviously superior men, being they are well over six foot. They not only steal our hearts, but our lives. They're too superior for me, so I settle for killing a bunch of guards and taking the other bridge across instead. It's a masquerade party, so despite wearing the mask of the killer terrorizing their city, the guards don't question me when I produce an invitation. What amazing security. Shortly after the entrance gate, I realize this is still technically a stealthy way inside, and I, of course, can't stand for that. A little bit of slowing down time, blinking, and spraying my pistol like crazy all prove essential to my survival. Inside, though, I find myself dying over and over again as I fail to keep up with the many guards headed to kill me. Nearly every guard is a master at sword fighting here, so I relied heavily on shooting before stabbing in order to make any progress. Heidi in this corner really helped as well since I couldn't be flanked or shot from afar. What some may call cowardice, I call strategy, thank you very much. It helped a lot that everybody dropped a bullet so I may keep firing. After that big fight, the mansion was easy and safe to explore as I munched on every bit of food I could find. I do feel a bit guilty when running down some stairs, I smack into a maid who dies on impact. Why are these people so fragile? I come across the three Boyle sisters, one of them being the person I'm here to kill. I have no idea which one, but the white one's taken out of the running when I accidentally, yet hilariously, kill her by opening the dresser. Like I said, why are these people so very fragile? I decide to leave it up to fate in the form of a grenade. Not much of a plan, but it's all I have. Thankfully, I do succeed at killing the right sister. And both the wrong ones, but still. 
With my victory, I rush out into the night like an agile hero, and promptly die from misjudging the fall. So this time, I rush into the night like a cautious hero, and head out back through the gates. My gun has been the most valuable resource in this game, so I upgraded a bit more, then head off to kill the Lord Regent, the lead man behind all of this. With tall boys around, things are pretty dangerous, but some valuable whale oil, slowing down time, and teleporting on top of them ensures I make it past their outside line of defense. Inside, I rewire their electric gate, and then trigger the alarm so my enemies will rush me. They do not disappoint, and the fighting after that actually goes pretty smoothly. Instead of hunting the Lord Regent down, I simply broadcast his crimes on the giant radio announcer, leading to his arrest. Or at least, it would be his arrest, but the guards notice me standing there all awkwardly and it leads to combat. The Regent tries to flee, but is shot down by a guard right before my whale oil takes the guards down. Not the dramatic victory I expected, but I'll take it. With his death, I head back to celebrate victory. If you want to avoid the big spoiler, I'd head out now. For those of us still here, of course, the loyalists prove less than loyal and I'm betrayed. Samuel's a true friend and doesn't let me die. Instead, I'm found poisoned and adrift by the assassins that killed the Empress at the start. How nice of them to save my life after ruining it so horrendously in the first place. Sure, they intend to sell me off, but they suck at security, leaving me in a hole that's super easy to escape. I repay them with some quick deaths, recover my gear from some crazy sewer people, and head to take down Dodd, the leader of the assassins. Dodd is the true boss of the game, as he also has a tattoo, so he's cool like me. Death after death comes at his hands, but the one power I have that he doesn't is plot armor. Shooting him doesn't work so well as he freezes time meaning the bullets don't move, but I manage to inflict enough damage when outside of the time freeze until I can decide his fate. It's very dramatic, and I'm sure he rehearsed it. Thing is, I got people to stab and Emily to save, so I don't have time to listen, so off I go while he rambles on. On my way back, I come across that sweet old disturbing granny Rags. She's cooking a human stew in her bathtub, and while I could just leave since we're old friends, I decide to fight her. There's only room for one crazed maniac in this city. Every time she dies, she turns into rats and keeps attacking me, making her quite the fight. However, will I be an immortal like her? Surprisingly, quite easily. It turns out the book nearby has instructions on how to kill her, plus the necklace that she has bound her immortality to, she keeps right next to the furnace, so it's really quite simple. For a woman so desperate to stay alive, she really didn't try very hard on hiding everything that could keep her that way. Back at the bar, I contact Samuel and we'd head to the inn together. Unfortunately, this is where I leave old Samuel when he denounces me as being worse than all the rest and tries to give away my position. I knock him out, letting him become one with his boat and announcing myself to the area by rewiring a turret to open fire on all the guards nearby. Heck, Samuel can say what he will about me being terrible, but I doubt any of the others have the kind of showmanship I do. I discover the trio of villains have turned on each other, and I engage their men bit by bit. After repeated deaths, I find that standing next to a narrow doorway and just blasting with my pistol at anyone coming in really works wonders. I take down Martin, find Pendleton dying to his wounds, and make my way up to the top to take down Havelock, the ringleader. He's holding Emily at the edge up top, using her as a hostage. I accidentally take the stealthy route to him, but quickly reveal myself so I won't lose the challenge. That backfires, and we find ourselves fully caught up. As it turns out, though, falling to my death is a good thing, since I get a do-over. I realize the finale is missing a key element to this run, chucking bottles at people. With one climatic throw, Havelock falls to his death, but I manage to grab little Emily, saving her, though she's all murderous now, just like me. And there we go! Dishonored's been beaten without ever using stealth. The city's in ruins, most people are dead, and little Emily's likely a little sociopath now. But heck, I won! I was bold and brash, and I don't in fact belong in the trash! This time, anyways. I truly hope you all enjoyed watching the challenge as I did playing it. If you did, please feel free to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it almost as much as I enjoyed throwing bottles. I promise not to betray you like the loyalists betrayed me. Or, if I do, I promise you can chuck bottles at me till I fall off a lighthouse too. Regardless, have an honorable day. See you later, friends.